Hello everyone and welcome to Setting the Stage. We're going to learn all about Johann Sebastian Bach. Now, go grab the materials that are needed, including a cup of coffee or hot chocolate, and let's watch the, a portion of this piece together. Now, it is called the Coffee Cantata. Who has ever named a song after coffee? I don't know of any other song about coffee, but this is going to be fun, and then we'll find out why he named it that. So, what did you think about the coffee cantata? Now, Johann Sebastian Bach was a Baroque composer, born on March 21st in 1685. He was born in the small town of Eisenach, Germany. Bach's father was the church organist and taught young Johann how to play the violin. Almost all of Bach's male relatives, about 76 of them, were all professional musicians and they played a large role in developing Johann's musical skills. Sadly, by the time Bach was 10, he was an orphan and lived with his brother. He was able to support himself at the age of 15 by singing and playing the organ in towns nearby. Now Bach played a lot of different instruments as he grew up. These included the violin, brass, harpsichord, clavier, which is a small piano keyboard, contraba contrabass, cello, oboe, bassoon, horn, and most likely the flute and recorder as well. Isn't that incredible? Bach was a devoted man of God and wrote a lot of music for church settings. Many of his pieces had the letters SDG or Soli Deo Gloria inscribed at the bottom of the music. This means for the glory of God. The people of Germany loved Bach. He was a fabulous organist who could wow an audience with his acrobats on the keyboard. Yet he also had some peculiar personality traits, which included loving coffee so much that he wrote a whole cantata about it. He also loved going for walks, long walks. Now, did you know that Bach once walked 200 miles just to hear the great organist Dietrich Buxtehof, or Buxtehode, I can't even pronounce it, to watch him perform? It's no secret that Bach was a family man. He married two times in his life. Together with his first wife, they had seven children. And after she died, Bach married Anna Magdalena, a wonderful musician who helped Bach in his musical work. Bach and Anna had 13 children together. Now, if you're counting correctly, that's 20 children. Unfortunately, only 10 lived to become adults. At the age of 63, Bach went blind. Some say it was years of writing music in the dark or with the moonlight shining through his room that contributed to his blindness. One year later, he died after experiencing complications from an eye surgery. Not much of Bach's music was published while he was alive, and he only really became famous 100 years later, when two famous composers, Mendelssohn and Schumann, whom you might have heard of before, they found Bach's music and shared it with the world. There are over 1,000 compositions of Bach's known to us today, which include almost every Baroque genre. Sonatas, concertos, cantatas, keyboard, organ, and choral works. Bach is regarded as one of the greatest composers of all time. Take a few minutes to watch this overview of Bach. His life was so cool. So let's solidify what we've learned. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Young Learners Activity of Lesson 1, which is all about Johann Sebastian Bach. Now we are going to play a 
Bach Bingo. So if you turn to page 30 in the appendix and 31, those are your playing cards. So you can either play directly from the book or you can print off one of the bingo playing cards and one for each person. Um, there, uh, you can pick from two different ones. Now, I am going to show you an example of how to play this. I'm going to play the beginning of a piece of music and you will take some game chips and you're going to put a game chip on whichever square that you feel like is representing the, the piece. So if you hear mostly harpsichord or if you hear mostly the piano, which we call the clavier, um, you're just going to put a game chip on it. Okay. And so if the first person to get four in a row or you can fill it, it all up, but today we'll just play four. Um, wins the round and you can play multiple rounds just by switching up the songs. So wh whoever's in charge of the, the pieces of music would have, um, would be able to switch them up. So here it goes. Here's your very first piece of music. So what instrument did you primarily hear in that piece of music? Now, if you said the harpsichord, you are correct. So I'm going to put my game chip on harpsichord. Here is another piece of music for you. What instrument did you hear there? That's right. That was the piano, or we call it the clavier back in those days, which actually was a smaller keyboard. Okay, here's another piece of music for you. What instrument do you hear there? That's right, the horn. And so I have two spots for the horn. So that means that the person who's playing the music could go back and repeat a, a, a song as well. Now we'll do one more. And I want you to listen to what type of music or what instrument you hear in this. dark, deep sound. What instrument was that? It's called the contrabass. So it's also called the double bass nowadays. So you can keep going and see who the first person is that gets four in a row. Now, remember, these are all instruments that Bach played himself. That's how talented he was. So keep listening and have fun learning about different instruments. Hi, and welcome to the older learners for the Bach activity. I'm so excited for you to learn a little bit more about uh, Johann Sebastian Bach and the organ, which was such a main instrument of that era. Now, we are going to listen to Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor, which is a very, very popular piece of music. And you'll be able to find that piece of music just by scanning this um, QR code, okay? Once you listen to it, it's only a few minutes long, please describe what you feel, what you see in your head or hear while you're listening to this piece. You can jot them down in bullet form or um, you can write full sentences, whatever you feel like doing. 
And then I want you to um, click on this website if you're using the digital copy or scan this QR code with either your iPad or your iPhone and use this resource, which is a kid's resource, to write some of the interesting details about the organ. So um, the first question is, how is the sound of an organ created? There is so much attached to that and how the sound of the organ um, happens. So write that down. It's very, um, it's a right or wrong answer. Okay. And also what are the pipes of an organ made of? This is very interesting. The three parts of the organ console, you're going to write a name here. You're going to name four different families that organ stops can be grouped into. Okay. So and there's four places that you can write that. And then I would like you to list three composers who wrote specifically for the organ. All right, so you can find that all in this website or in this resource. And then listen to some more music if you want from the listening suggestions back in the, in the first lesson and have fun learning. Goodbye. This beautiful story is called Becoming Bach by Tom Leonard. There was always music. Music was always being played. When it wasn't being played, I heard it in my head. This is Bach at age one. My family had been musicians for over 200 years. In our part of Germany, musicians were called Bachs. I always wanted to be a Bach. We would bring our instruments and play and sing on a hillside. Even our picnics had music. I learned to play the harpsichord, the trumpet, the violin, the flute, and the organ. And I sang in my strongest voice. After mother and father went to heaven, I needed to say things, but words weren't enough. I walked over 30 miles with my brother, Johann Jacob, to live with our oldest brother, Johann Christoph. He taught me music. I love to copy music, but my brother hid the hard music from me. I found it when he was sleeping at night and copied it. All of it. The music made patterns on the page. The patterns made music when you played them. Patterns like the designs on my mother's dress. Patterns like the ripples on the surface of the river. New sounds, happy sounds, quiet sounds, yellow sounds, red sounds, blue sounds. All the sounds in my head. I needed to make patterns, so I wrote music. Patterns of sound, patterns of invention, just seven notes. Every note made a different sound. Just seven notes. Two notes together made a different sound. Three notes together made an even more different sound. What sounds could I make with seven notes? I saw patterns everywhere I looked. When I got my first job as a church organist, I sat down at the organ. I looked at the massive pipes that seemed to rise up to heaven above. 
the manuals on the keyboards all lined up in black and white, the pedals on the pedal board beneath my feet. I looked at the stops in rows like notes on a page. I pulled out all the stops. And I produced the largest sound possible, a sound that could be heard for miles. It was a mighty sound. It was a sound that would be heard forever. It was the sound in my head. It was then that I knew I had become a Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> 